Hi, I'm Jack Grimmer at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. This week, we'll look ahead to... Um, no, we won't. Uh, there isn't a game this weekend. You probably know that already. But uh, the proposed fixture against Cambridge United has been postponed due to the international break, which is good news if you, uh, well, A, are doing something else, uh, B, are a player who's been called up for international duty. Uh, we'll uh, focus on those uh, very shortly as well. And uh, C, um, if you're a non-football fan, you probably wouldn't be listening to this, to be fair, uh, but you might be related to someone who, who is a football fan and uh, they'll realise uh, that there's no, <laughs> no game for the men. There is a women's game on Sunday. We'll be uh, previewing that as well. Coming up in a few moments' time, we'll catch up with Phil and perhaps in our match briefing look back at uh, what's happened so far in the uh, early throws of the season. We'll also uh, be looking ahead to Wickham Wanderers women's first league game of the season. It's home against Oxford City on Sunday at Burnham and uh, many uh, may already be going uh, who are listening to this uh, perhaps from the 1887 or uh, perhaps yourself as a fan just want to get your football fix for the weekend and cheer on the chair girls uh, Craig who does their media will be speaking to us shortly we'll also catch up with one of their newest signings as well Chelsea Coles who plays in goal and uh, has played for Chelsea as well and Hull and others and uh, she made her uh, league debut on Sunday. Uh, we'll be catching up with her as well. We'll speak to a former Wickham Wanderers defender who's only very recently become the latest signing for the Wickham Wanderers Ex Players Association. He remembers the uh, sloping pitch at Lokes Park very well. Nick Price, uh, who used to be a defender in the uh, well, mid 80s, I guess you'd call them. <laughs> Do you remember the mid-80s? Uh, he'll be uh, sharing his memories with us in a few moments' time. Well, quite a few moments. Arguably the second third of the programme, in fact. Uh, so all that and more on the way in the next hour. We might even look ahead to the next game as well, which, of course, is the visit of Blackpool on the 16th of September. But first, uh, I'm very pleased to say Phil joins us in the studio to reflect on uh, what's been a sort of uh, well, fairly the, eventful the last four few games, games of the season. Uh, No-one's got better form in the league in League One than Wickham Wanderers. Uh, three wins and a draw, uh, and that draw against Burton probably should have been a win. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, the league form has been excellent, you know, and, and it kind of puts it into context after all the doom and gloom of the opening two games when, you know, everyone thought the season was over. Uh, actually, it's been good, and I don't really think we've properly clicked into gear yet. So uh, I take that as a promising sign as well. Uh, as well as the fact we've now got two weeks at the training ground to, to really hone the game a bit more. And hopefully we can see uh, the, the results of that at Adams Park on the 16th of September. Great day, by the way, uh, against Blackpool. And fans listening to Ring in the Blues on, on Tuesday night as well would have you know, heard their reaction to, to the Northampton game. And fantastic, A, to win on a Saturday, but also you know, the, the manner that, that that victory happened as well. Yeah, two away wins on the bounce. And I thought Northampton Town were excellent especially in the first half, I thought they passed us off the pitch. And as you know, if you did listen to Ringing the Blues, you would have heard their fans took it incredibly well. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I mean, they did point out that they played really, really well, but they had a young goalkeeper on loan from Newcastle who made a bit of a howler. He didn't look confident throughout the game. He didn't have much to do, and, and what he did have to do, I didn't think he did it particularly well. And perhaps that sort of, you know, that lack of confidence in him showed a little bit in their, in their defensive play. Um, and also they didn't really have a cutting edge up top in terms of a goal scorer. Um, so, you know, we'll only remember the score in, in a few weeks or months or years' time. We won't remember the fact that they played some excellent football in the middle of the pitch. Um, and, uh, but yeah, if you don't look after both ends of the pitch, you can lose the game, as, um, as was shown on Saturday. They've had some really good results coming into the game as well, and I think they'll do very well in League One. Um, I think, yeah, if they could add, add a goal scorer or find a, a killer touch then they could be a team to be reckoned with. And, you know, but I thought the fact that Wickham, in the second half, the triple substitution really sort of brought out Wickham's character. They dug in, they defended brilliantly um, and were, you know, deserved the three points on the result of that second half defensive display. And so nice to have some of the, the new and obviously established players as well uh, on international duty at the moment. Yes, yeah, you know, it's this international break, as, as fabulous as international football is, is uh, for fans of domestic football is a little annoying because we've just sort of got into our stride, haven't we, getting our rhythm as fans and, and pundits and commentators and what have you. Um, and then all of a sudden we have to have a break to see England or whoever play whoever. Um, brilliant for our youngsters and our players who are on international duty. Uh, Killian Phillips, uh, TJ DeBar, uh, Dale Taylor, who sadly sat to withdraw from injury. Uh, I'm missing one, aren't I? Who am I missing? 
Joe Lowe. Joe Lowe, of course. How could I forget Joe Lowe? Um, you know, fully deserving of their international recognition. Uh, I hope they have a great time. And more importantly, I hope they come back unscathed. And also really nice to have uh, the boost of the uh, surprise signing for many, I guess, of uh, Mr Sadler's arrival. Yes, yeah. Uh, unbelievably, uh, the, uh, the soothsayers on social media haven't predicted that one, uh, which led to some surprise. Uh, but that's a great signing. You know, he's got over 50 goals in the league. Uh, he can play out wide. He scored some great goals uh, with both feet and his head. He scored against Wickham in the past. Uh, I think Wickham had a good look at him a few years ago. Uh, he's played in the Championship. Uh, you know, he's a good lad um, and looking forward to seeing him uh, in, in the quarters, uh, probably after the international break. And 12 summer signings now, Matt Bloomfield must really feel that he's, he's putting together something special. Yes, yeah, it's been, we've spoken in the past, haven't we, about this huge amount of change, uh, which brings its own challenges, as well as the excitement that that brings as well. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, a lot of work to do this in this two-week break up towards the Blackpool game. Um, to really sort of get that pattern of play established and let's see what Kieran Sadler can bring to the party. I'm looking forward to it. And I guess obviously fans will be excited to see you know, the way the team will be setting up and the way the team will be you know, playing with these, these new additions. Yes, yeah, I think um, you know, with, the, with the break as well, it gives a few of the injured players hopefully some chance uh, to get back. I know we won't be seeing Jack Grimmer um, for a little while you might be uh, I, I will be seeing Jack up in the commentary box which I'm very much looking forward to um, but obviously the, the flip side of that is he won't be on the pitch um, but yeah if we can get some of those injured players back as well uh, I think defensively we've, we've looked a lot more solid in the three uh, of late um, and it's been difficult because of the injuries and the, the changes made there uh, so hopefully we can have a good run of a settled back three if that's what Matt continues to play um, and then to use that as a solid basis. And I think he would love us to score more goals. I think every football manager and fan in the in the four divisions would love to see their team score more goals. And, and Wickham Wanderers fans are no exception to that. I must take this opportunity to ask how you'll be spending your Saturday. Uh, so my birthday is actually on the 16th of September. Well, where you you hinted at that, didn't you? I did mention it was a wonderful day. It's a fantastic day. A uh, great day to come to Ellis Park, by the way, um, as well. because uh, To celebrate with you. Yes, yeah, and I hopefully see a really good game of football. Uh, so I'm having my birthday a weekend early. So uh, I'm not going to football on Saturday, obviously. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to spend it with my family, which will be a nice touch. Well, I wish you whatever the opposite of belated happy birthday is. Yes, thank you very much. Always great to have Phil on the show, of course. I'm really not sure what the opposite of belated happy birthday is. <laughs> have to look in a thesaurus or something uh, don't forget if you missed this week's ringing the blues as well well worth a catch up on your uh, podcast wherever you get those from and of course you can get some great content on wanderers tv phil will be back with us next week looking ahead to the game against blackpool uh, also the march of course as well for prostate cancer uk uh, he's involved in that as well you'll get to hear steve brown uh, as well he'll be at the uh, legends lounge and also on co-commentary duty with him as well uh, now though we'll hear from craig who looks after the media wickham wanderers women uh, they have their first home league game of the season on Sunday so if you're uh, not around uh, on Saturday or if you're uh, looking for your football fix this weekend do get along and back the Churgales against Oxford City and as we've been hearing in recent weeks as well with the uh, success of England uh, it must be a great time to be involved with Wickham Wanderers Women It's brilliant uh, Colin you know the season now is underway I uh, played uh, Ascot away um, and that, that sort of that build up that anticipation was uh, it was good girls were in good spirits for the game see the result didn't quite go our way but that's football that's going to happen but it's how the girls respond to that and 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 kick off but as i said like like you said the world cup as well was 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 very special and it certainly brought the 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 girls sort of some of the newer girls that we've signed closer together as well we kind of watched the final together as well which is really nice and uh yeah i think that the, the club as a whole was just happy that the the season started and well underway and speaking to the manager last week as well, something that really came across that, you know, the amount of new signings that you've had, and especially some recently as well, but there's been no issue with the integration because, you know, it's such a great sort of close-knit group and, and very welcoming as well. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I can't, I can't sort of speak for, for, for Carl and Dan and Ed, but certainly when it comes to sort of selecting players that they want to bring into the club, um, you know, obviously they, they know their footballing ability, which is why they were selected, but, you know, the girls' personalities have, have, have slotted straight in and, you know, they, they've, They've really got on well with the other girls and the integration's almost been seamlessly. And there's something really nice about the pathway, isn't there, about the, the under-18s, under-23s under, under 23s, and, and obviously the first team as well with, with youngsters really sort of eyeing places to, to impress the, the coaching team in, in the first team as well. Absolutely. I think the, the way that the, 
the guy, the coaches uh, structure the sessions as well. You know, you you can you can literally be an under eighteen training over with with Sonny, but you can see the under twenty threes with Bex. You can see the first team with Carl. You can you can literally see what it takes to get through the through the stages. And even yesterday, we had two under eighteen girls playing the first team um, because their opportunity was there. There was absences and there was people away or injured. So you know there was there was opportunity there for them to do that and. I don't think a lot of clubs at this level have the depth and the strength that we have, and it just gives the girls, uh, you know, that that overall goal to get to the first team. So, are there any, any particular players this season that we should be excited to to be looking out for and, and watching them develop and progress? Um, when it comes to the first team, there's obviously we brought a few new girls in. Um, I think in regards to the younger ones, I particularly like uh, just my personal opinion. Uh, I think Crystal's got a lot to, to bring. She's uh, she's only seventeen, uh, but she's a forward, a wide player who I who I think's quite you know I think she's one to watch. She's quite she's pretty tall. She's she's, she's very dangerous, and um, I think she's going to really like learn a lot from from the coaches and from her teammates. I think she's uh, she's gonna she's gonna really kick on this season. And obviously yourself and Bobby do a lot with the, the social media. Have you noticed a real increase in, in interaction with, with fans and, and really real up rising in interest? Yeah, and I think that a lot comes down to obviously the lioness of success. It comes down also to the continuity and the consistent message that myself and Bobby are putting out. You know, the standard and the quality of the content we're putting out. There's no point putting out something subpar or substandard because it's just going to dilute the, the good quality stuff that we are trying to put out and and you know we're, we're looking at you know WSL teams Premier League teams what are they putting out and we're just we're just trying our best with with the limited resources that we have and and the time that we have around our, our full-time jobs to 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 match that and to do as much as we can but in regards to the interaction we're seeing you know not only Wickham fans starting to interact more and and fan groups like you know like the 1887 interacting with us and uh, the Wickham Way and the Wickham Zone I think there's another one so that there's so many accounts now that are dedicated to Wickham that are as involved with us on social media as they are with the men's team and great from a, a supporter point of view to have as you say the 1897 and, and just you know extra people come along to see the games especially this weekend yeah I, and again I just want to say thank you to them because they reached out to us um, which was, was, a, was a wonderful sort of surprise um, in a positive way and they reached out to us and wanted to to know, you know, what what game is best for us to come down to. They said they'd like to come to the Oxford game, and we were like, absolutely, it's the first home game of the season. You know, a bit of Wickham Oxford. You know, it's uh, it's not Oxford United, but it's Oxford City, so it's Oxford Oxford. So maybe they picked that one for a little bit of a of a localish uh, derby game. Um, but uh, for them to reach out to us is uh, is fantastic, and um, you know, I just want to say thank you to them, and and I just hope they really enjoy the game on Sunday. Burnham's a fantastic stadium. We've enjoyed being there for the last 12 months. It's It's got great facilities. It's got um, some good food, some great hosts. And uh, I think they're going to enjoy the football on the pitch as well. And there are other ways that the players can be supported as well. Yeah, at this, at this time of the season, we are, I would say, we're just, the season's just started. And um, some of the girls um, are still looking for sponsorship. Um, they have to pay to play. That might come as a surprise to some people, but these girls have to pay to play. Um, and their full-time jobs or their, their part-time jobs. They, some of them might be students. Um, some of them might be, you know, 16 and, and you know, still full-time school at sixth form, so they, they may not even have a part-time job. So, you know, any any people look listening to this, if you're a company or if you're an individual and you're thinking, I want to, you know, how can I get involved? How can I help the girls? Um, you know, either part sponsor, half sponsor or, or you know, full sponsorship, um, would would mean a lot to uh, just you know the girls individually as well as the club to 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 know that you're supporting one of our girls, but to the girls individually they would they would mean a hell of a lot to them um, for you to do that. And to find any more information out about that, you can go onto the Wickham website. You can go onto the uh, women's uh, tab on the Wickham website, and it's all on there. Um, how much it costs and all the sort of perks and things that you can do. But you know these things can also be talked about, and if there's something you you particularly want or, or want to talk to us about then we can we can certainly help with anything and it's always nice to ask the manager if he's got particular goals for the season or to ask the players if you know individually or collectively there's things they'd like to achieve but but how about yourself what would you like to see in terms of i guess interest in the game or, or to see the the various teams achieve this season 
I mean, per, from from a, from a media point of view, obviously, when the the girls win, it's you know we get lots of interaction on social media, and you know everyone's really happy when they're doing the post match interviews with me and stuff. So, from a completely selfish point of view, you know, obviously, uh, to win as many games as possible. But you know, I think just you know we we would love to to see you know. 100 people plus down at Burn. I think that's that's probably a goal that myself and Bobby have had since we started working together about a year ago. That's um you know that that's something that we we both uh feel is is very very possible this season. Um and you know by having people come down to to games um you know in their numbers I feel like that's really going to lift the girls. I think you know they're not you know the last time we played in front of a, a large number of people was at Adams Park. Um, that was over 250 people, and the and the girls won. And at some one point in that game, they had we had 10 players because of an injury, and they couldn't bring another sub on. And you know they saw the game out. And I think you know by having the support of of, of a large number of fans, particularly home fans, I think it really it really pushes the girls on, and it really inspires them to kind of go that extra extra five uh, five yards. And there's a real sense of community throughout the club, isn't there? As we, we talked about the closeness and the camaraderie, and it's really nice to see like on social media, you know, pictures of a social event, for example, or them just generally kind of in a sort of relaxed, I guess, frame of mind. And it's, it's really nice to see, you know, that that kind of sense of, I know, I know some of the players have said in, in when we chatted to them before, just the sense of, sort of family amongst the group as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Carl will say, you know, when it's time to go to work and it's time to, to train and to play, you know, obviously the, the focus is there and it has to be there for obvious reasons. But certainly when it comes to uh, social events or, or, you know, potentially like, you know, dinners or nights out, you know, that's the time to relax. That's the time to, to, to you know, to bring partners or children or, you know, mums, dads, whoever, everyone's welcome. We don't, you know, no one's turned away for sure. So it's it's nice to be able to relax and sort of get to know each other personally, I think. You know, by getting to know each other on a better level off the pitch, it certainly helps the girls on the pitch and under, you know, brings you closer together. And does it feel like a really exciting time to be involved with the club? Because obviously, you know, speaking to Carl last week, last season was a real season of transition, but it feels like now this is something quite special could happen. I think so, and I think just from from what I'm doing with Bobby and myself, and you know, last season we were we were getting to know each other as well. So you know, what everything that they're doing on the pitch and in training that exactly the exact same thing comes back to to what we're doing with the media and what we're doing with the strategy to to push that forward and um you know now we know each other like really well after the last 12 months uh we you know we we know what we like or what what doesn't work what does work maybe things we want to try you know both of us have got that sort of same driven sort of attitude to to improving to making it better and as they do on the pitch and obviously you recommend uh, for anyone listening to, to follow the team on social media. Absolutely. Please do. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Colin. Don't forget you can hear more from Wickham Wanderers Women as we chat to Chelsea Coles, uh, one of the chair girls' latest signings, a goalkeeper, later on in the show, here as the Wickham Wanderers show continues on Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Bill Turnbull, a broadcasting legend whose tireless campaigning for prostate cancer awareness left a lasting legacy for men's health in the UK. Bill's message was clear. I really want you and your loved ones to take this simple online risk check now. Let's honour Bill's legacy together. Let's get men across the UK to check their risk. Let's broadcast it like Bill. Check your risk. Share the risk checker. Save lives. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Thursdays from 7. Second part of the Wickham Wanderers Show. It's a show of three thirds, if you've uh, heard before. (laughs) If you're new to the show. You might really wonder what's going on. Uh, so, uh, still to come, uh, we'll hear from Chelsea Coles, also a new signing for Wickham Wanderers Women, ahead of their opening home league game of the season at Burnham on Sunday. And uh, as we've mentioned already, without uh, Cambridge United's game, uh, that being postponed this weekend, a real opportunity for you to get along and support the chair girls. But first, with big thanks to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association, one of their nearest signings, a defender who uh, played for the club in the mid-80s. Let's get the earliest memories from Wickham Wanderers former I, defender I Neil Price before so sort of the 86 end of 86 season 85-6 
I think I played half a dozen games in what was then, I think it was the Gola League, wasn't it then, or whatever it was That's then. right, yeah. Um, yeah, and I remember coming and, and playing in, at that level and, and quite enjoying it, actually, because I'd actually been in a pro game before that. And uh, No, I enjoyed it. Nice, I think I, I remember one game, I, I think we played at Frickley or somewhere, and I remember that quite a frenetic game. But I came right at the end, and to be fair, they were already sort of a little bit adrift or it was never going to struggle to stay up. So for me, it was a little bit of a weird entrance into such a big historic club like Wickham, a non-league club like Wickham, um, because it wasn't the greatest atmosphere around, obviously having just got relegated. So what were your first impressions? Well, it was a big club. You know, that it was a, a big old traditional club with lots and lots of history. But in the old days, you had to get elected in, didn't you? That's um, right, yes. And... And Yeovil were the same, weren't they? They were a massive club as well in that in that you know in that non-league scene, and there was a few really big clubs about. But as I said, it was a bit of a closed shop the league, wasn't it? So it was sort of a, a separate entity, really, wasn't it? Non-league football, league football, and and in them days, you know, if you had a really good job and you played at the top of the non-league game, you could earn an absolute fortune. So I think that was the. That was sort of where it was at the time. So it was a really good standard. So what was the adjustment like for you? Because obviously you got to play at Wembley with Watford, which we'll, we'll talk about in a bit, but it must have been strange in a way for you to be playing against you know, teams like Kettering or Barnet or you know, Fisher Athletic in those yeah. days. Yeah, a bit. I mean, you know, like I'd, I'd come up through the ranks at Watford and obviously played in lots of hot senior cup games and when I was a kid, sort of 17, 16, playing against a lot of specifically Hertfordshire non-league teams, you know, where and... Stortford and stuff like that, and lots of friendly. So you know, it's the it's sort of you, you make your way into the into the men's game, don't you? Through that sort of route as a young, or you did then anyway. As a young player, they used to throw you in on a, a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night away to Bishop Stortford, you know, in a Hart Senior Cup game and get lumps kicked out of you and become a man, really. So I was sort of used to that. And then as you go through the reserves, was a you know, w- w- was another baptism of fire because you had proper players playing for proper money and proper teams, you know. So that was difficult. But coming back out again, obviously done the in doing the, the, the league football and, and, and playing at the levels that I did, coming out again was, was yeah, it, it was a shock at the time. I remember going to Plymouth and thinking that was a shock, you know, um, playing in, in league, in, in what was then, what, Division 3 then, you know, League 1 now. But yeah, to come out, I mean, you know, ultimately it's it's fairly local for me. I'm a I'm a Hemel Hempstead lad, and you know, if you're going to play for anybody in non-league football in our area, you go to Wickham, don't you? No, absolutely. And I guess the infamous sloping pitch must have taken some some getting used to as well. I, I liked it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people didn't. But as a fullback, obviously at that top end, it was quite good being at the top end, and you know, you could really come down off that top end, and uh, and it was quite advantageous. But um, and the bottom end was all right because it used to go out for throw-ins all the time. We, t- I think, I spent most of the games just taking throw-ins down the bottom <laughs> end. <laughs> and obviously, you, you must have built brilliant rapport with you know your teammates of that time, and, and brilliant to kind of reconnect even these days as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's good because with the advent of with the advent of social media, and I know there's a lot of negatives to that, but you know, there's you know WhatsApp groups and stuff and bits and pieces and. You know, I'm still in touch with a lot of my, my 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 mates and friends and stuff from years ago, Watford and various other clubs, Swansea and and Blackpool. So, you know, you you do that. Not so much Wickham. I, the Wickham ones only just come up recently. I, I it's really weird actually. I, I I saw on a on a forum or something or a, a post on Facebook actually, and I saw Alan Gain. Now Alan was our my manager. He one that brought me there, and I didn't actually know that Alan played for Wickham. You see. So I just put something up on the text to say, I didn't know, because Richard Parkin, who was with me when I was a manager at non-league level, Hendon and stuff, he was he, he piped up and said, yeah, he did. He, he, he was pretty good, because obviously he's a generation older than me. Um, and uh, John Taylor came in and, 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 and said, hi, Neil. You know, sort of like that. <laughs> and I went, oh, we had a little, that, that was a forward. And then, obviously, it's gone from there. I've, Recently, well, this today actually just joined the the former players association and and stuff like that, and I didn't know that existed. So, so that's sort of how the Wickham thing has come sort of into my into my remit. I mean, I you know, there's it, a bit of sadness there really because 
obviously I, I sort of crossed over with Bobby Dell. I didn't know realise Bobby had died, and I didn't know Gary had, Gary Lester had died a couple of years back. So you know, on a on not a very um, happy note, you know, you find out things because now I'm connected, and that's you know it's good, and it brings back lots of memories. It brings back lots of memories. It's really nice, isn't it? We sort of joked off air about how, you know, there aren't many industries, I guess, where, especially kind of work colleagues, if it's strange to call them that, in, in sort of teammates in football, but, but you've had that kind of experience in, in that dressing room or on the pitch or in, in training or on the bus, and, and it's nice to kind of, you know, reminisce about those times. I think it is, and when you've been in a team and certainly successful teams with, with other players, I, I always say it's a bit like being in the army, you know, you, you're all in it together, you're a group, you're a team, you live and you die, you live and you, uh, you, live and you breathe together, you're you know, you win and you lose together. And it, and it is a bond that when you all get back together, because, I mean, I've been instrumental in, in doing the Watford Former Players Association with Luther um, and initially Graham back in 08, which is not being supported by the Italian people there at the moment. So don't get me started on that. <laughs> um, but we, we, we've gone down that road and I think it's invaluable. And it's really funny how things bring back, right? And it's, it's weird, right? When I heard about Gary's death, bless him, lovely man, I remembered, just like that, that he loved Janis Joplin. Now, where's that? what's that about? I haven't seen Gary for years and years and years and years. And all of a sudden, it brings back a memory like that. They're the good things, aren't they? It makes you think about people and your interaction with them and, 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 and all of that. And, you know, it's got me thinking today about Wickham. And, you know, because it hasn't, you know, there hasn't been that many memory joggies, that jogs, really. But no, it's, 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 it's been good. And I, I, I said to John today um, that I'd be delighted to take part in this. And, you know, it's just, it, it was a part of my life for, for nearly three, well, two and a half seasons. And, you know, it, 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 I always look for their results. I always, I, I like the club and, you know, it's nice. It's lots of good memories. I think it's really nice as well for fans to have the opportunity to hear from you because you know, they'd have probably seen you play at Lokes Park or, or even away games, obviously, as well, and, and perhaps even followed your career before when you're at Watford or, or other teams as well, and just you know, wondering what you're doing now. And really great to hear you know, sort of your stories and memories as well. Yeah, no, and I think, I, I, that's again, speaking to John this morning, and the reasons why we did the former players and Graham Taylor was so adamant about it was is because I think it's the glue between the fans and the football club. And increasingly... In the times we're at, which are very money orientated, aren't they? Very players are from everywhere. They're not from just down the road, you know, where it used to be more a bit more local community based. The community clubs clubs are getting swallowed up with impersonality of, of personnel and players. And I think the older members of, 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 of supporters of the groups and the te- and the teams and and what have you like to remember them times, and we like to remember them times. And I think. You know, when you do all get together, it, they're just such wonderful events that I think, it, you know, it, it should be kept, it should be treasured. And, and it looks like Wickham are doing that, which is brilliant. And it's really interesting, isn't it, the sort of family tree type aspect that you come across in football, especially, you know, for example, you'd have played with Neil Smiley at Watford and he, he went on later to be yeah. the, the Wickham manager, of course. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's very, and, and you see it all the time. And you forget as well where you met them players or where you met that, that lad or where your paths crossed. You know, I was thinking, mate, today's made me think about Durham, Kevin Durham, the Durham who, 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 who left us far too early, years and years and years ago. What a good player Durham was. Uh, and then it's, you start to remember about some of the tours we went on to Athens and stuff with Wickham and had some good tours and the good times you had and, you know, where you met him and, you know, some stories about Noel Ashford, which I can't repeat on here. Um, <laughs> And and all sorts of things, and uh, you know, we we we, we were talk with just Mark West. I spoke to West. I actually settled in Tame and um, and uh, Oakley for ten years till I moved to Cornwall last year, and I used to see Westie a lot. And that's from obviously them times. What a good player, what a good goal scorer he was, you know. So it, it, it's really good that and it, it seems to it knits all these things together, doesn't it? No, definitely. And are there particular kind of games or occasions or moments that really stand out from your time at the club? Obviously, you mentioned that the relegation, but I guess kind of the, the promotion season as well was really special. Well, I, yeah, I don't really remember too much about the relegation season. So I only, if I played six, I'll be, I'll be surprised right at the end. But the, 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 the promotion season, the thing I remember from the promotion season was, the, was actually the rivalry with Yeovil at the time. And, uh, you know, they were, they seemed to, like to beat us. I think we had them in a, a cup competition. I think they beat us home and away. 
but we ended up being about 30, well, a fair few points ahead of them, didn't we? 100 and something points. I remember us being relentless. I remember us going to places and being absolutely relentless and so much better than everybody else. And I remember playing, there's some players that played that season against us. Les, Les Ferdinand played for Hayes against us that season. Ian Dowie played that season for Hendon, I think, against us. I know the ones I can remember. I'm sure there's a lot more. Well, I think Pardew played, didn't he? Did Pardew play for, uh, for Yeovil, I think? Yeah, I think you're right. So, so there's three off the top of my head that I've just not thought about for donkey's years until today. <laughs> and, yeah, and you think, what what a good standard that was. I'm, you know, you're looking at that. And I had this before you come on. I've, I've, I've just had ten minutes. I was looking at some of the crowds. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's home or away, but it's crowds of three and 4,000 against Yeovil. I think one of them was away, one was at home. Regularly getting over a, a 1,000, 1,400 for, for a midweek game against Haraburra. You know? I mean, oh my goodness. You know, you look at that and you think, that's just unbelievable. And, and the club's such a big club. Um, and I think that season, when I just looked, I looked it up earlier, that, that, that season, we, the promotion season, I think they won the Capital League Cup and I think we also won the Barks and Bucks. And we beat Aylesbury somewhere. I can't remember that game very well. <laughs> I've probably got the trophy somewhere. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, you know, it's, it's good, isn't it? It's nice to bring back them sort of memories. And, and you know, and you know, I've for, completely forgotten about Declan Link. I mean, what a, pl- a player he was. Is you know, and, and you, you, I, I, honestly, you just, it's just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's just uh, like glancing back through your football annuals or your sticker books, isn't it? And just saying, oh yeah, I forgot how you played yeah. for him. Yeah, I forgot what we did. I, you know what you did, but you, you don't think about it always. And when it comes to the four, it's good. And it, it gives you that extra little bit of a bond. I mean, I've been told today I played 60, 70 games for Wickham. I didn't even know what that number was. It's strange at the time, isn't it? Because I guess you don't really appreciate it. You're so kind of focused on actually doing it. But it's not until years later that you get to reflect and you, you realise how special it was. Yeah, no, I agree. And then, I mean, it's a shame, really, because the following season when we went up, I had a bit of an injury. I I I got a bad knee, and injuries sort of stopped me playing a lot for for a large part of that season, which was a shame. But I then moved on with Alan anyway. Alan obviously got got the team sack, didn't he? And and we went off to Stainton. And the following season, there we we won um we won what was what that be now that would be the one down. So that'd be Prem, uh, Isthmian one, and got into the Isthmian Prem, which is the Conference South now. So. You know, you think about that, and, and and you think about your careers, and you think about. Either, I mean, you know, I found it. I think I it was one point where I won a promotion three years on the spin, and but you don't think about it when you're doing it. You just just get on with it. I think I won a Middlesex Senior Cup and a, a Barks and Bucks Cup. I think I won either one or the other for three years running. No, it's incredible. I mean, do you, do you, it's a strange thing to ask, I guess, for, for yourself, but do you sort of rank how you did? Like, obviously, for example, playing at, in, the, in the FA Cup final for Watford must be, it must be well up there, but, and there must be so, so many other sort of re- things that really stand out. Yeah, I mean, look, for me, um, I was a young lad who was, uh, you know, I was, I was a squad player at Watford, let's not get that right, but I played some incredible games, you know, and you just think, oh, when you did it, you just did it. I mean, the games that I played in, you know, I mean, for me, the final was the final, but we lost. And whenever you lose something like that, you never have the same rapport with it than you do when you win. But the semi-final was incredible. To win the semi-final at Villa Park and, and play in that game, you know, to play away in front of 68,000 people in Levski Spartak, um, which was then the UEFA Cup when we finished second. So basically the Champions League, because only one played in it. You know, to win away there, at, you know, in front of 68,000. You know, to play... To play in Sparta Prague, to play against Kaiserslautern, to play against teams like that, to play against Arsenal, you know, and beat Arsenal at home, you know, to play against the, the great Nottingham Forest sides, local derbies at Luton, Wolves, you know, playing against Liverpool. I mean, oh my God, you know, if you told me that now, I'd be, you'd be going, oh my God, I've got to save her every single second of this. But when you're young, you're just doing it, you're in the moment, aren't you? No, definitely. And you mentioned there that you touched on you went into management as well. How, how did that compare to playing? Um, obviously, my, my, the trouble is I had a bad knee and a bad ankle. And by the time I got into my late twenties, I mean, I, I played at Wildstone for a while as well. And you know, I went, I, I, I played at high non-league football. Didn't go any lower than that, so I didn't really want to do that. But when I came out, I came out fairly early. Um, managed Walton and Hersham, and again, they were in the 
Isthmian 1, which would have been the one under the Conference South now. I mean, we managed to get promoted behind a really good Stortford side. Um, and then we got to the first round of the FA Cup the following season and lost to, lost to Swansea 2-0 at home uh, after beating Yeovil in the last qualifying round, 3-2. Um, so that was good and that was, that was a, a promotion and that. And then I went on to Hendon, <coughs> did the same thing, uh, finished sort of halfway up a couple of times and we got to the first round of the FA Cup and lost to Cardiff 2-0 in uh, Cardiff. So that, that was enjoyable. Then I went to MO Hempstead and got a couple of promotions, won a couple of cups. And then just after that, I went into BBC stuff. I went in and did the BBC live commentaries for nearly 10 years. So, you know, I've, I've had a really quite different life. It's all been based around football. And it is, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting, isn't it, that a summit like that can take you and have such a huge part in your life. And even now, 59 years of age, someone pops up and brings back all these memories and you join another chapter, you know? No, definitely. And what, what do we find you doing these days? I'm, I work in property. I, I develop properties and stuff. I've always done it. Done it. I bought my first back garden when I was 24. So um, I just built a barn for us down here. I've just got a barn converted, which is great. Um, and we're just taking, taking it nice and steady, you know, having a nice life down here. It's beautiful down here. And, and yeah, just trying to enjoy your life, really. And might we, might we see you back at Adams Park sometime soon? Well, I'm always up. I've got three older boys that are all married or, or, or living with, with girls, uh, you know, their, their partners. Um, I, I'm, yeah, no, look, I'm always up and down. I'm, I, be, I was up a few weeks ago. I'm always about. And I, I just say to John, I, I, I'll be delighted when, when, when he sees fit to come up and, and support the former Players Association and, and get involved and perhaps come to a dinner or do a golf day. It'd um, be nice to see some, some old faces. Well, it's been really fantastic to speak to you and share your memories. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. It's a pleasure. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Thursdays from 7. Final part of this week's Wickham Wanderers Show. We may even have time for a notice board section. It was very brief last week. <laughs> If you heard it, um, perhaps you didn't. Perhaps you missed it altogether. But let's continue our uh, feature with Wickham Wanderers women. Uh, we've been catching up with uh, one of their newest arrivals, uh, Chelsea Coles, who uh, has played our, for Chelsea uh, and others, as you'll hear. Well, it was a local team to start out with, and then I started playing for MK Dons when I was about eight years old, and I started out on pitch. And then I went in goal because the goalkeeper wasn't there, so I went in goal, and then from there it just stuck. What was it especially you particularly like about being in goal? Because it's, it's quite a, I think as well, when you're at school especially, you kind of get put in goal because nobody else will. Or, you know, it's because, it's, it's cause, you know, there, there isn't another one. I think it's because of the pressure. I don't know why I, I thrive underneath pressure. So for me, being in goal was like I had to lead everyone because obviously you can see the whole pitch because I've obviously always played with a team in all sports because when I was younger, I used to do cross country, athletics, gymnastics, everything. So with that, it was like I was in control of my own. And you played for a number of other clubs as well at different levels, which must have been great for your, for your experience. Yeah, yeah, I've played for multiple clubs. Obviously, I've travelled around a little bit, been on loan and stuff like that. So my journey started at Don's properly. Uh, and then I went over to Watford. I've played for QPR, Oxford, Arsenal, Chelsea. And then I played for Hull City when I was up north. And then obviously now Wickham. So how did that come about? Because Carl said he'd, you know, he'd been sort of monitoring you for a while, so that must have been really nice to know. Well, yeah, what happened was is I was uh, trying out at loads of other clubs because I obviously moved back down here to Milton Keynes, trying out for loads of clubs, and obviously he popped up and said, come to training. So I went to training, and then it was just like, right, I want to sign for these because the girls there made me feel like a family. Uh, the coaching staff there were brilliant. So, yeah, I've just decided to stay with Wickham. Hopefully the journey gallery's on. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, what, what were your first impressions? Oh, brilliant. Every The staff straight away welcomed me. All the players come over, introduced themselves. It felt like I've been there for years. For years it did. But, yeah, all the girls are really good. They're sound as girls. They're, all the coaching staffs are really good. Yeah, they all made me feel welcome. 
And it must feel like a really good time to be joining as well, because last season it felt like a real sort of season of transition. But but this season, you know, a number of new players have come in, and you know, there's players who've been there a long time, but also some youngsters coming up through the ranks as well. And it must be great for you to be joining as well and kind of sharing your experience too. Yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of it is with the goalkeepers as well. A lot of the goalkeepers look up to me because they're a lot younger. Some of them are 16, 15. So I think with my experience and my age, I think they look up to that because a lot of people come up to me and ask for my advice. And I'm happy to give it. All the girls deserve it. So in my eyes, I'm there to help everyone and for us to hopefully win the league. And does that feel like a real key part of your role as well? Just to, as you say, really kind of pass on you know, the experience that you've been through to, to, to players who are up and coming, especially in your position? Oh, 100%, 100%. I'd rather someone fight for their place and want it more than me. So for all the youngsters that are in goal or on pitch or anything, if they come up and ask me something, I'll tell them my point of view or how to do stuff because I do have that experience in goal or in theory out on pitch because obviously I used to play out on pitch and I'm a coach as well. So I'm always there to help the team because at the end of the day, it's a team sport. Absolutely, and a real great benefit for the, for the rest of the players as well. To, as I say, really benefit from your experience. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> And really nice for you as well to be able to, to give it and be in that position where, you know, you can influence and, and, and watch others develop as well. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's the reason why I coach, because when you see someone start off with where they were, so where they end is the best feeling, even with like kids football, adults football, anything, because at the end of the day, even I'm still learning. So all the coaching staff are there to help me learn as well. So if I can pass on a bit of their coaching on to the other players or to anyone else then that's the goal and do you find especially youngsters at the moment with after England's success you know come up to you and say oh, I'd like to be like Mary Earps and yourself you must be really inspired by by her and you know other England goalkeepers and WSL goalkeepers as well with Mary Earps and stuff like that it's brilliant to see obviously they had that little bit about the shirt which is a bit of disappointment but obviously with all the England players and stuff and obviously I used to play with Leah Williams and I used to go to school with her as well. So seeing all them girls where they, even with Leah, where they used to be to where they are now is brilliant. So, but there is a lot more girls that want to be goalkeepers, which is even better because before and when I started off, there wasn't that many goalkeepers. So what's some of the main things you've taken away from the first league game of the season? A bit of a disappointment, but all the girls tried their hardest. It was very, very hot. We had a lot of youngsters that come up and filled those spots because we've got a few first team players out injured or away at the moment. But it was a good experience for a lot of the reserve players to come up or under 23, should I say, to come up and fill those spots to see where they are at. But I think everyone tried their best in that game. But we just need to work more as a unit. But we will all get there. It just takes that time process because we're all new to each other. Of course, and I guess as well, it's just the first game of the season, it's going to take time, isn't it, for, for everyone to gel and things to develop and you know to, to really put the manager's yeah. plans into, into place as well. Yeah, definitely. I think with us, I think nerves sometimes get the better of us. So obviously if we have the fans and that behind us every week in, week out, then that will help as well. So if we could get more fans down to like home games and like maybe some more away games if, if it's close by for them, then that'd be great because obviously our first 15 minutes is where our nerves hit. After that, we're probably one of the best teams I've seen in the league. And interesting you mentioned the home games and the opportunity for, for support because this, this coming Sunday is your first home game of the season uh, against Oxford City and by some coincidence uh, there's, there's no men's game because of the international call-up so a fantastic opportunity for, for supporters who perhaps would have gone, gone along to the, the men's game on, on Saturday to really come along and, and back the chair girls. Yeah, yeah, so that'd be brilliant. It's a good thing that the men aren't playing as well. So obviously, hopefully some of them will come down and watch because everyone likes watching football, let's face it. And obviously, if we can get more down to the home games, it'd be a brilliant support because obviously with our first game of the season being against Oxford, I think that is where we will shine the most and feel more comfortable because it is a home game. It is a massive opportunity for all the girls to go out there and show what we're made of. And I think we can do that as a team. And if we get all the supporters there behind our backs, we'll definitely have it in the bag. I think we will anyway, without sounding too confident. I think the opportunity is there for everyone. And for us to play at home 
our first game of the season against Oxford is a massive opportunity. And do you set yourself kind of targets and goals, both individually and collectively, you know, now that you're part of this team as well? Every goalkeeper wants a clean sheet, but obviously that's like a high-level goal. But obviously my aim is literally just helping all the girls out, always communicating to them, because obviously I can see the whole pitch. And obviously as a team, obviously we want to win a game. We want to win every game we can. So the aim is probably getting that win. It is a high goal, but I know the girls are capable of doing that. And I know I'm capable of doing that. So if we all work as a unit, then we've we've got this. I think a lot of us in the first team and the under-23s going down to the under-18s, I think everyone's goal this year is that promotion stage or at least top three. But at most, we all want promotion. So I think we've all got the same goals. It's just working together at that mindset of going, right, let's do this. It's a great incentive, isn't it, for both yourself and, and the rest of the team that you know you probably feel that you really should be playing at a higher level and, and would want to be challenging yourself there too. I think with the group of girls we've got, maybe like a few more people coming in from the under-23s or players coming from elsewhere, I think we can compete at higher levels because I think we are, in a way, too good for this league. Without sounding too confident, I think we are. And I think if we carry on going and pushing ourselves in training, in games, in and out of football, I think we will get that goal. And just finally, what would be your message to supporters, especially perhaps who have not been to, to see a women's game before? Come on down, support the girls, and it would be a bit of a different experience. Obviously, women's football is a little bit more out there. We need as much as fans as we can to get the support that we need, and you'll be shocked at the different levels that women play. We are just as good as the men, I think, and you would be shocked by it. And a really nice opportunity as well for youngsters to come and be inspired by yourselves as well. And, and hopefully you'll, you'll get some more, more goalkeepers of the future coming along as well. I hope so. I hope we do get more goalkeepers and a lot of youngsters come along and watch. Obviously, we'll all be there after the game, signing autographs or whatever they need. We're there to support. So we want those youngsters coming up and looking up to us as a team and in the individuals. So for them to come along and see that would be brilliant. Well, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Wish you all the best for the, the coming season. Look forward to catching up with you again soon. Definitely. Thank you. Great to hear from Chelsea. And we'll have another new Wickham Wanderers women signing on next week's show as well. And to look back at their first league home game of the season against Oxford City. Uh, do enjoy that if you're going along. Uh, Luke's back from his travels. I'm very pleased to say he can join us now uh, with uh, the uh, almost infamous notice board section of the show. Thanks, Colin. Nice to be back. Uh, yeah, let's bring you up to date with some of the latest news from Adams Park in the last few days. Uh, starting with the news that Steve Brown will be making a guest appearance in the Legends Lounge for the Chairboys League One fixture against Blackpool on Saturday the 16th of September. Uh, Brownie was a firm fans favourite, spanning three of the club's finest achievement as part of the teams that won promotion in 1994 under Martin O'Neill and reached the FA Cup semi-final in 2001 under Laurie Sanchez, as well as being on the coaching staff during the run to the League Cup semi-final in 2007. He'll be talking to Phil uh, on the 16th of September in the Legends Lounge. If you want to find out more details about that, uh, then WWFC.com, where you can also find out more details uh, about the Cambridge fixture, which has been rearranged for the 31st of October at 7.45. Uh, that game, of course, meant to be happening this weekend. It's been postponed, though, uh, due to the international call-up. All ticket information uh, you can find on the website as well for that and talking of international duties Joe Lowe Killian Phillips and TJ DeBar are the players that are in line to add their tally of international caps by representing their nations this week good luck to all three of those and as you may have seen on social media Chairboys fans up and down the country and across the world now starting to receive their kits uh, and you can now buy the home and away kit in store at Adams Park uh, all the details for that can be found on the Wicked Wanderers website, www.fc.com, or just head to the shop and you can buy some. And that is your notice board section of the show for this week.
Thank you very much for listening. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, we're back next week at the same time uh, with an actual game to look ahead to. We'll preview the visit of Blackpool. We'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield, of course, uh, as mentioned a little earlier on in the show as well. Uh, Steve Brown will be in the Legends Lounge and accompanying Phil on commentary. We'll hear from Phil as well, of course, uh, next week in the show. And uh, we'll also, as mentioned, hear more from Wickham Wanderers Women. Uh, another Wickham Wanderers ex-players association representative will be joining us and we'll preview the Prostate Cancer UK uh, March as well to uh, raise uh, money and awareness uh, in memory of Bill Turnbull. Uh, that's next Sunday. Uh, more uh, on that and a whole lot more on the Wiccan Wanderer show. A uh, quick reminder as well, there is a podcast version which you can listen to uh, as build up to the match. Uh, which, of course, if you're listening to this, uh, there isn't a match this weekend, but you can listen to it as build up anyway to uh, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, perhaps the Wiccan Wanderer for the win match, for example, uh, on Sunday. Thanks very much. <laughs>